Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly video for you on this little guy right here. This is the Damn Designs Fenrir. So, um, I'm sort of curious about this assembly on this guy. We have ourselves a pivot, obviously, and then we got ourselves these two screws, but on the other side we got ourselves these two screws, and what looks to be a fillet tab. I like the fillet tab, by the way, that's a nice little gesture here, but, um, I suspect what I'm about to be doing is unscrew this, this, and this, and then the knife comes apart, but we may have some surprises in there. Who the heck knows? Fenrir. I'm trying to think. That's a Norse mythology or something like that. Or it's the rear of Fenway Park. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the other team's bus pulls around to the Fenrir. Anyways, I digress. Um, Let's go on ahead and... Put that in there. Fenway Park, for those of you unfamiliar with the Boston, is the uh, Red Sox. Baseball stadium? Yeah, stadium park. Whatever. Mm, that's needing a little bit more torque than I feel like I want to give, and I actually happen to have my other uh, Torx tool set out here. And by the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using, uh, go to nickshabazz.com slash tools for uh, the links and such. But anyways, I'm going to use this. I already had it out for my last disassembly. So this just gives me a little bit more handle to put some torque on things. Yeah, a little bit of thread locker there, but we are nice and through. And oftentimes using this style of handle just gives me a little bit more, well, torque and control on it, which is something I always appreciate. All right, we have removed all three of those uh, screws, and now if I'm accurate, then I should be able to remove everything here. But that's not the case yet. Uh, or at least I, it, it, it didn't automatically spring apart, which is fine. Um, okay, well that part, this is a little, um, pry spudger tool. I'm not using much force here, I'm just kind of applying a little bit of leverage in places where it seems prudent, and oftentimes just that little tiny bit of encouragement is enough to you know, separate things out and uh, make everything happen. Okay, this part is lifted up. That's good. I'm going to do a quick idiot check right quick. Um, What I'm checking for is to make sure that there is not a screw hidden underneath the clip for some reason or any other screws because when you, it is dangerous to do this kind of priolation, if you will, when you're not sure that you've removed all the screws or not, uh, right? Because you don't want to be prying into something that is... Well, still got screws on it. This is definitely taking a little bit of doing to get apart. The thing is, though, if I'm looking carefully at it, I think that's actually just tight fit uh, around the clip here. Um, because I, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing bare ends here. But I'm also seeing a little bit of sort of machining weirdness there. So what I'm going to do is, um, uh, let's see here, what am I going to do? The, this half of things is very much dislodged, but this half, okay, no, see, it's coming apart a little bit. There's a little gap here that wasn't previously. So I'm going to try something a little different here, and I'm just going to lift a little bit more here. Just lift this liner up, and I'm not really using a lot of force here. Um, all I'm doing, yeah, see, look, it's it's encouraging it further apart here. Then I'll kind of let it snap back to home, and then I'll try lifting from another perspective. My goal here is not the application of force. My goal here is the application of motion. Because really what I'm probably doing is just sort of like walking it up a little bit uh, on this, such that it can gradually come unsnapped. If I were to just really, you know, incredible hulk the damn thing apart, it ain't working. But if I repeatedly do little motions, things will kind of come out better. Yeah, it feels like we're loosening up here as I'm doing this more and more. Because there is a stabilizing pin in the back here, which is fine. Um, there is no way for there to be a screw on that. And I just hit the phone with my Batman mask, which I deeply apologize for. Um, okay, the pivot is coming out, uh, which is fine. I'm going to use, I'm going to take advantage of that right now. Uh, here, we'll press through with this. Because getting the pivot out of there is not a bad thing for me, because if I get the pivot out of here, use this watch spring bar tool to push through. If I get the pivot out of here, good, beautiful. 
then I can do this. I can get the blade out of play. Now, at this point in time, this is a uh, much more inert object, so to speak. And this gives me the ability to grip onto it in this way and just kind of slip this in here. Beautiful. So now I've removed the G10 bit. And then we see one more time that, no, I'm not being an idiot here. It's just uh, so that we had our stop pin there. And then, yeah, now I just had to walk this bit up a little bit and get it off of all of those parallel posts, and we are apart. Beautiful. Okay, in terms of assembly and construction, there's really no shocks here, right? This is built like a relatively budgety knife. Uh, very dirty on the inside of the pivot there, which is um, fine. That just means we're probably going to do some good for the action here. And we do see that the bearings are wearing a little bit of a race into it, um, and in fact, we see a little tiny bit of um a uh, little tiny bit of bearings like areas where the bearings have pressed into the metal a little bit which indicates that these aren't the hardest liners ever but you know what at the same time after a while of using the knife uh, it'll kind of just turn into one compacted race and probably work out fine Again, very budgety in construction, but very budgety in price, so, you know, <laughs> checks out. Um, but anyways, so just go ahead, get in here, clean off this little region here. Yeah, a whole bunch of gunction up there. Get in here, clean this off. I hope I haven't been doing a bunch off camera. I'm still using the camera angle from an Ask the Nick uh, I did recently. So, yeah. Anyways, um... That's good. Let's go on ahead and uh, clean up the bearings a little bit. I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol here. It's the only solvent, so to speak, I'm using. Just run that between these guys here. Beautiful and beautiful. A little bit of machining or just sheet metal pain here on the inside of the liner. I don't care. Uh, right, that's not a demerit for me because A, it's a relatively budgety knife, uh, and B, it feels much more wasteful to uh, remove, like to throw away this liner for what is very fundamentally a cosmetic defect than otherwise. So, you know what, I'm not going to complain about it, but it is there. Um, and we also do see some skeletonization, so to speak. The liner itself has holes drilled into it in a variety of places. Um, this is to save weight, um, to make the balance on the knife a little bit better. So here's this, our non-free spinning pivot. This is, I'm just checking to make sure there's no like shelf or anything like that. I wouldn't picture this needing to be oriented in any particular way, but because this itself, the, the reason for this hexagonal head being a good thing, not only is it a branding effort, which it works fine as, right? It looks good. But more importantly, it is, uh, it prevents the pivot from spinning freely. So I can, you know, rotate the pivot on the other side there and it just doesn't matter, right? Uh, it's, it's, I can unscrew it without trouble. Okay, there we go. Put a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use in this case some 10 weight nano oil. Just put it down on the bearing race, drop on a bearing. Bearings look golden. Well, <laughs> literally hey uh well the bearings look ceramic which is good by the way ceramic bearings are, well not something i can object to really my wife is probably going to announce dinner in the next little while here because she's downstairs making dinner and is want to announce when it is ready so if you start hearing my wife randomly say hey dinner that's that's what it is I know that's going to shock you. If you hear my wife say dinner, you, you might not be sure that she's announcing dinner, but I can guarantee you that in the same way that I can guarantee you that somebody right now is clutching their hands together and saying, but Nick, you idiot, there's a washer still in there. Um, yeah. Anyways, I digress. Go ahead and drop this in. And rotate, rotate, rotate the bearing. Get that spread out. I have massively over-lubricated the detent ball path. I'm going to try and parlay a little of that into the bearing. But, oh, boy, that was an Exxon Shabazz moment. Uh, let's go on ahead and push this on. Um, I know that I need to be a little not cautious, but 
I need to get all of these things in parallel, like all these holes and posts are relatively tall because they go through this relatively thick G10. By the way, the clip never came off. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I kind of have to be a little cautious as I snap everything back together here um, so that I keep everything in alignment. There we go. We're all snapped through. Snappity snap. All right, we're good to go there. Now I'm going to drop the G10 on. Not entirely in position yet, but I don't rightly care because as I tighten things up, the G10 will snap the rest of the way in as this will become flush. Uh, let's go on ahead and put some thread locker on here using some blue Loctite on a stick here. Drop this into position. And let's see here. Tightening, tightening, tightening. Okay, and that was too tight, so I'll loosen it up just a bit. And now I will put in the two screws in the back here for the clip. Again, use a little bit of thread locker. Why not? <laughs> Did I really make the back of Fenway Park joke? <laughs> nice. Uh... Uh, that was a stretch. I'm picturing Slicey Dicey. So Slicey Dicey's an excellent YouTuber and also a professional-ass comedian, right? Um, I'm sorry. He's a professional comedian, not an ass comedian who's a pro. But anyways, uh, I'm picturing him judging me for that one. Because, frankly, that's well-deserved judgment. Um, but yeah, he's like my humor conscience. Like, every time I make a joke that I know is bad, I picture him in the background judging me. All right, uh, so we are put back together here. Everything is running better, frankly. We're dead-centered, smooth. Oh, yeah, good to go. Uh, that is a better action than my sense of humor is. Good God, I can't even... All right, um, before Slicey keeps judging me, like right now, he just someplace, it's only 7 o'clock Pacific, so he ain't asleep, but if he was, he just woke up in a cold sweat, not sure what went on. But nonetheless, before Slicey starts, um, you know, pacing in his home, not sure why, uh, at my jokes attempts, I'm going to go on ahead and head down the stairs and um, have some dinner with my wife. So, hope this has been interesting to you, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.